Welcome back into Gamecock Central, everybody. Kendall Smith joined alongside of Wes Mitchell here to break down South Carolina's latest commitment. It's Elijah Caldwell, a three-star wide receiver in the class of 2023 from Rock Hill, South Carolina, a student at Northwestern High School. Wes, another in-state guy for the Gamecocks, Caldwell, one of two kind of final players that South Carolina really made a push for in the class of 2023. It's him along with Nicholas Harbor, who many people know his name. He'll be announcing his decision on February 1st. But you see there Caldwell's on three profile committed to South Carolina on Thursday afternoon via Twitter. Wes, what do the fans need to know about this pickup for South Carolina? Yeah, like you said, Kendall, two final targets were Caldwell and Harbor. Uh, Checkbox by one of them. Uh, they, they get the in-state receiver who had a really a huge senior year. I, I think this is someone who South Carolina had sort of been monitoring, I guess would be the best way to say it. They were aware of him. Uh, didn't offer until after his senior year. He was committed to West Virginia early on. But really, once South Carolina offered, they went all in on recruiting him visited the high school several times. They had him in on an official visit this past weekend. That visit obviously went very, very well. And then so that welcome home that Shane Beamer put out on Sunday afternoon was actually Caldwell giving him the news that he was going to be a Gamecock. And then, of course, Caldwell went public on Thursday afternoon. Northwestern is a place, I can tell you, growing up in York County, huge tradition of putting out football players here just across the board, not just the South Carolina. This this high school um, always has players. So you go in, you get one of their best players, and an in-state guy is the number 10 player in the state for this class, according to On3. And, you know, Beamer's talked about it from day one, putting a fence around the state, not letting this guy go out and be one of those people that goes to West Virginia or goes to NC State and fans three years from now go, well, why didn't you recruit that guy? He turned out into a pretty good player. So love this guy. I think it's a very resourceful pickup. I think it's smart to take guys in your state, and the Gamecocks do that with Elijah Caldwell as they kind of put the finishing touches on this class with one final puzzle piece to go. The 10th ranked player in the state of South Carolina, and as you mentioned, Wes, Elijah Caldwell had a big-time senior year, well over 1,000 yards, I think like 1,365 yards, 77 receptions, 20 touchdown catches, so a very – spectacular senior season which obviously led to the commitment we've got his tape up there so give us a little breakdown of his game Wes yeah you're gonna see it right here this is a playmaker he was there by far their primary target in this offense you see the ball skills right here can go up and get it good route runner I had a chance to see him in Trombol practice during that week where he actually hit it off with Lenoris Sellers the South Carolina quarterback signee at the time Lenoris was committed to Syracuse, but it was kind of an open secret that he was going to flip to South Carolina. So I think this really got rolling around that time. Those two guys hit it off, developed a connection, and uh, Lenoris probably saw what we're all seeing right here. This kid can take the short pass, go the distance. Very high football IQ. He has big, strong hands, can play all four positions. Uh, one person compared him a bit as far as skill set to Farrow Cooper that played at South Carolina. I, I don't think he's like that burner elite speed guy, but uh, plenty fast enough. 6'1", 190, so probably physically is going to be pretty far along in terms of being able to come in and possibly help South Carolina right away. And, you know, I think there is some room for somebody to come in and play that position. We know that Juice Wells is back. We know that the guys surrounding him are back, like on Joyner, Amarian Brown. But if a playmaker is able to emerge, there's still plenty of room for somebody to play early. You see some nice footwork on the sideline there as well. So this is a fairly complete receiver here in Elijah Caldwell. And again, like I said, that versatility to play any of the receiver spots, that means inside in the slot or outside as sort of that outside down the field wide receiver, that can help you get onto the field early. And I believe Kendall can probably help South Carolina on special teams as well. So a nice late pickup for Justin Stepp. And I just go back to the Palmetto State keeping guys at home. And I think it's more important than ever with the transfer portal. If you got an in-state guy that can help you, take him. Because I think these guys are going to be much less likely to transfer out after a couple of years. 
that if you take a guy from out of state, he comes in, blows up, and then the home state school starts giving him a call trying to get him to, to come back home. So I, I love the fact that you're taking a Palmetto State guy late in this class. Wes, I think you make a great point there, especially with the portal and the new world of college football that we're living in. Like you said, you do see so many players now that kind of want to go back home, especially if, you know, things work out for NIL reasons or whatever it might be. They want to kind of head back to where they're from. And we've seen that in South Carolina, you know, obviously lost a chunk of players to the portal this year. So keeping in state guys, very important. And he's from Rock Hill, a couple of pretty good game cocks from Rock Hill, Jadavian Clowney and Stefan Gilmore, both from that area too. So lots of expectations when you talk about that neck of the woods in South Carolina, Judge Collins, Another 2023 recruit commit for South Carolina, now signee, I guess you could say, also from the Rock Hill area. But one last question for you, Wes, about Caldwell. People are going to see the three stars. And South Carolina has been picking up a lot of four-star players as of late. And they might not be as jazzed about a three-star player as they would be a four-star player. You know, for Caldwell, I think there's something to be said. He's obviously got a lot to to offer. Do you think people should be faked out by the three stars or just as excited as they kind of would be for any other four-star type player that South Carolina gets? No, I, w- I would encourage them to watch the film, Kendall, and uh, you're going to see a guy who can make plays and, and really just was a late arrival on the recruiting radar. I, I think that matters here. You know, he had a huge senior year, probably if he did a bunch of camps in the summer hit up a bunch of schools and was able to really expand that offer list at an earlier point. He didn't get the NC State offer until late, didn't get the South Carolina offer until late. I think he probably would have had a chance to rise in the rankings a pretty good bit faster. And, um, you know, Kentucky, I think, was, from what I've heard, was highly involved at one point as well and, and nearly sort of went in on him. So, you know, I mean, you look at him here. This is a good football player, and all three stars are not created equal for one. And uh, beautiful spin move there, by the way. And also, Kendall, a three-star, I think we got to get out of our head, a three-star is not a bad player. Like, if you look at the definition of a three-star, you are still one of the best high school football players in the country. When you get to college, it's all about what do you do with your opportunity from there? How do you? How hard do you work? How much do you develop on and off the field? Um how do you insert yourself within the confines of your team and fitting in with your teammates? All those things are on the table. And, uh, again, high football IQ guy, physically ready to play. I think those things will help Caldwell make a pretty quick impact potentially at South Carolina. And anytime – you know, we've talked about this a ton, Kendall. Anytime you can help on special teams, that gives you a little bit of a leg up at a place like South Carolina. And um, – one other thing, I mean, we're watching this film with you here. Just a physical guy. Like, you can see him taking hits, holding on to the football, um, almost creating contact and delivering contact at times. I think toughness is something that can be underrated in a wide receiver prospect. We have seen in the college football world walk-ons thrive and five stars flop. So, Take it with a grain of salt, and obviously a three-star player, still very, very talented, big-time pickup. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I would probably be negative 500 stars if they tried to look at my powder puff football tape from back in you the know, day. You were at least a one star. That would be like very, very generous. Although nobody did score a touchdown on me, I played cornerback, and I was very proud of that. We called it lockdown Kendall. corner, according Kendall to the island. Family. Lock it down. Yes, uh, but besides the point, big time pickup in Elijah Caldwell for the South Carolina Gamecocks starting to shape out this class of 2023. Just hoping for one more final commitment in Nicholas Harbor, the five star athlete from the Stay DNA tuned, right? Area. Yes, we've got plenty more on that over on GamecockCentral.com. But for now, we're talking about Elijah Caldwell, three star wide receiver out of Northwestern High School in Rock Hill, South Carolina. He is officially a Gamecock. And like I said, we got plenty more over on GamecockCentral.com and on our social medias at Gamecock Central. So be sure to check it out. Until then, though, we will see you guys soon. He's Wes Mitchell. Thank you for everything, by the way, Wes. You crushed it, as always. I'm Kendall Smith. Have a great day, everybody.